There are times in history when people are open to the prophetic voices in their midst. It's in those times that creativity is at its most intense. The prophetic voices come in the form of the poets, the playwrights, the philosophers, even politicians who are able to express reality in a way that empowers the population. The people get together and they work for their own personal interests, yes, but the focus is on the common good because it's through the common good that they are able to amass the, the intense creativity that leads to the construction of civilizations. At those points in time, we note that they create spaces like this one, the amphitheaters of the mind. They gather to listen to the prophetic voices that break new grounds, that expand the mind, that explain to people the realities of life and that enables them to construct new ways of living, respectful to the natural environment, to the community, and exploring the full potential of their humanity. There then comes a time when, for whatever reason, which I won't discuss today, minds are closed. The collective consciousness is cramped. The prophetic voices are lost in the wilderness. The people still gather in these spaces, but now it's bread and circuses, virtual reality, the reality show. The collective consciousness is no longer synchronized with reality. And that's when society faces an existential threat. We are now in the situation where the collective consciousness has been shut down. The prophetic voices, very rare, are no longer listened to. And the reason why I want to raise this issue is that last year I posed the possibility that we were facing a third world war. In the meantime, voices are being heard that are saying, that can't happen. There can be no third world war because this time it's different. How different is it? Who are these voices? They're the voices of the people who led half the world into the depression that locked Europe and North America in a downward spiral. People like Alan Greenspan in America, Gordon Brown in Britain, the people who said, this time it's different. This time there will be no more booms and busts. They reassured the people that conditions were stable, that there would be growth, societies would flourish, and then it all collapsed. These are the people who are telling us that there can be no third world war, that there is a way to escape from the depression that has now that so damaged communities across Europe and North America. Well, let's consider this question of whether I'm correct or not on the question of there will be a third world war. Let's look at the last war. When did it begin? 1939? Well, no, Hitler came to power in 1933 and he was determined to have a military conflict. But that wasn't the beginning of the Second World War because it was the 1929 crash that created the economic conditions, opened up the spaces for evil men like Hitler to intercede in the affairs of the people of Europe. But what caused the 1929 crash? It was the preceding economic boom and bust. It was a land price-led boom and bust which then led to this uh, Wall Street crash, which led to 1933, the rise of Hitler, and 1939. But what allowed the land price boom bust to occur in the first place? It was a kind of statecraft that actually encouraged people to speculate in land, to try and reap rewards for no effort, for not adding any value to their communities. That was the statecraft, a statecraft of greed that already existed, which preordained one day 
the Second World War. Okay, what about the First World War? When did that begin? 1914? No. Because prior to 1914, in the 1890s, European powers were building up their naval forces. They were preparing for a war. They were at war already in the, at the end of the 19th century. But in the 1880s, those European powers were scrambling for land in Africa, territories to dominate. Germany was the one that lost out in that scramble, so was that the beginning of uh, the First World War? Germany with a grudge because it had lost the territories in Africa and was out to equalize the power balance in Europe? No, because what caused the scramble in Africa in the 1880s? The depression of the 1870s which fostered among the rent seekers, the people who wanted to live off the labours of others, the need to go and grab the rents, the resource, the valuable resources elsewhere in the world to make up for the deficit in Europe, which was in depression. But what caused the depression of the 1870s? Prior to that, a land price boom bust, which was ordained by a statecraft, a statecraft of greed. So you see, we can say that the First World War began in 1914, but the chain of causation goes back over decades, and it's the same with 1939. The chain of causation goes back over a long period of time. The World War was already in process well before 1914 or 1939, and it's the same today. We are locked into a process that means we are going to end up with an overt military conflict. Look at the symptoms. In December 2012, a senior economist at the Bank of England said that Britain had suffered severe damage over the previous three years. A damage to the economy, loss of wealth, unemployment on a scale which he said was as if Britain had been in a world war. Well the English have a saying, it's about a duck. If it quacks like a duck, if it walks like a duck, it probably is a duck. If Britain had endured so much damage, material, wealth destroyed, hopes undermined, people unemployed, losing their homes, by devastation, if that is something that looks like a world war, then it probably is a world war. The damage is being done. And in countries like this, Greece, the whole economy has imploded. People have lost hope. Young men and women in their 20s are now susceptible to the heart attacks that we used to associate with people who had been smoking for 30, 40 years. It's the stress of the unemployment, of the conditions of devastation that's leading to young people enduring heart attacks and dying in their early 20s. And people uh, throughout Greece committing suicide in desperation. Doesn't that sound like a world at war? The prophetic voices, the poets, the playwrights, the filmmakers today, they are trying to signal the reality. But the collective consciousness has been closed down by those people who want to preserve the status quo. Therein lies the danger to our society. Unless we open up our collective consciousness, unless we gather in these vast spaces and listen to people who are expressing the reality, we will remain locked into a world of virtual reality and one day that terrible event, the Third World War, will be upon us.
Stop.